Let's see. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Adair Live. We will be hosting these every other week featuring experts from the home building industry just to help you better understand the ins and outs of building your dream custom home on your own land. Uh, my name is Gabby Gately and I'm part of the marketing team here at Adair and my co-host for today is Jay Sowers. So welcome back, Jay. We are always very excited to have you here with us. <laughs> Thank you for continuously inviting me back. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and today we're just going to be talking about um, submitting permits and just kind of navigating the whole permit process. So we'll be monitoring the chat the whole time. So just let us know where you're watching from and tell us maybe what stage you're building in or wanting to start building. Um and then whatever stage you're in, we want to hear from you. And we'll also answer any questions you have about any part of the home building process, whether it be today's topic about the permitting process or even um, our past topics or future topics. We would love to answer any of those. So put the questions in the chat and we will get rolling. Um, so kind of the objectives uh, we will be going over today is the importance of permits and kind of the regulations that come with those, the different types of permits you will probably see, and then the application process, and then kind of the overall timeline, just so you have a better understanding of uh, what you should expect during this process. So we're first kind of going to talk about just the role of permits and then overall timeline. So Jay, can you kind of briefly talk about the role of permits and why a homeowner would need them. Absolutely. So <clears throat> permits are one of those things that, you know, for any of us that are looking at, at building a new home, you know, we're looking at, at costs essentially. And okay, well, how much is the lot clearing going to be? And what about, you know, excavation? And what about bringing utilities onto the property, right? Like water and power, and, you know, and sewer septic, right? But one thing that, you know, Gabby, that you brought up that we can't miss is the permitting process, mm -hmm. right? So depending upon what jurisdiction we're in, whether we're in the city of so-and-so or within an a unincorporated county, every lot has a jurisdiction. And that's where, you know, the role of the permits is to make sure that, you know, the builder is building the, the home um, at current code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, quite frankly, Gabby, some of the costs associated with the building permit is to actually pay for the services to have a building inspector come out and, you know, review your home during all the different phases of construction um, and, and, and for the builder to be able to get sign offs. So that, that, that's kind of the overall role of the permit, um, as well as to have a plan reviewer, you know, review the permits up front before any mm -hmm. construction begins. And does this engineering make sense? You know, does this home meet, you know, current guidelines and specifications? Um, and then ultimately, we, we, we want to, you know, truly understand the cost of that permit up front so we can, you know, incorporate that into your project as well. Mm -hmm. And I know if I was thinking of it from my perspective, I've never bought or built a home before and I would have just no idea even where to start in this process. Um, mm -hmm. Can Adair help me complete some of these permits or at least kind of maybe tell me who to talk to? Absolutely. And that that is a question that we get from the majority of the homeowners and customers that we serve. I will say that depending upon the builder that you use, right, sometimes the builder asks you as the, as the customer to navigate the permitting process, mm -hmm. right? There are builders out there that do that. Um, there's other builders that navigate the permitting process for you, right? Um, I will say that this last year, uh, specific to our company, Adair Homes, we're in transition and we've transitioned to uh, doing all of the building permits on behalf of the customer, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a huge win. But but Gabby, honestly, uh, for somebody like yourself, and I will say um, you are just like the vast majority of our customers. It's like, well, how do I do this? Like, mm -hmm. tell me how much this stuff's going to cost is uh, it makes perfect sense. Work with your builder. The builder will help you understand what any and all permits required on your project should cost. 
and they will help you navigate that process, whether you're applying for them or the builders applying for them, or maybe the builders putting together all the paperwork and then handing it to you, the consumer, to, to be the applicant, right? Mm -hmm. But regardless, talk to your builder upfront about that on um, how you and the builder will navigate uh, the permitting process. Perfect. Um, and then you kind of talked uh, about before how there's um, scheduled evaluations and everything. Is that the same as a property evaluation? And if it's not, can I schedule a property evaluation before my permits are submitted? Or is that something I do after my permits are submitted? Yeah. So the the kind of the, the, the timing of the permit is think of it like this, is that when you and your builder are looking at the feasibility of this project up front, right? We're just trying to understand costs. So mm -hmm. from, from, from a permit perspective, are we even permitted to build on this particular lot, right? And then, and then if so, right, how much are my building permits gonna cost, right? Th those are kind of the things that, that we're looking at up front. Mm -hmm. So specific to a kind of a property evaluation, um, no, permits are never done or even applied for up front, right? So we, we want to do a full evaluation of the property, right? You and your builder want to understand and get a full scope of what is it actually going to take and what is it going to cost to build the floor plan that you want on this particular lot, right? And then quite frankly, Gabby, long after contracts are signed, and your builder is ordering the engineering and pulling together all the building permit applications, right? At some point in the future, generally builders know it as the pre-construction phase. That is when either you or your builder will be applying for the building permit, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of the timeline of, uh, of, of that process. Okay. And then you're kind of talk, you talk a little bit about like the cost of permits. Is there a set cost to maybe all the permits together? Is that combined already in the cost um, of the home? Could you maybe explain more about that? Absolutely. Um, I will tell you that unfortunately, um, the vast majority of jurisdictions have what we would consider calculations for your building permit. So how awesome would it be to just be like, yep, building permits for 750 bucks. Any mm -hmm. questions? But generally building um, departments will look at things like square footage, right? How large is the home? And then the cost of your building permit is dependent upon the square footage of the home. Um, there are other things at play like a septic permit. So if, you're, if your home requires a septic system, right? Then generally speaking, there's a septic permit. So how much does that cost? Right. Um, and then that, that goes through the health department, not necessarily the building department. So I will say that there, there is no tried and true rule on, oh yeah, no problem. Your permits, Gabby, I promise they're going to be exactly this mm -hmm. much. You know, unfortunately, like I said, it is a case by case basis depending upon your lot, depending upon your jurisdiction, and generally depending upon some factors on the property, um, specifically size of home, et cetera. So 100% of the time, you and your builder need to make those, uh, those phone calls, send those emails to the jurisdiction to really understand this home on this lot, how much is the jurisdiction gonna charge for building permits? Okay, yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> yes. Um, and then I'm guessing it's going to kind of be like cost, um, but is there a range of time that uh, someone should expect, expect these permits to be approved or just it does it uh, go case by case by jurisdiction? Well, um, it, it is again, it, it is case by case. So, you know, a lot of it has to do with, um, I would say, bandwidth and complexity. So. What do I mean by that? So if you're in a relatively small, you know, I'll just say kind of kind of a small town, hometown building jurisdiction, you know, I've seen building permits approved. I, I mean, so help me God um, in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're one of 
two building permits that, that, that are going to be getting approved that month, hypothetically speaking, right? Mm -hmm. um, on the other end of the spectrum, in very, very large metropolitan jurisdictions where there's uh, a ton of infrastructure going on, lots and lots of building permits, both commercial and residential, being processed and pushed through the, um, the, the building and planning departments, um, you can see that timelines can absolutely balloon because those jurisdictions only have so many staff members, right? And so uh, some of the jurisdictions that we serve, they take up to four and five months to get a building permit. Um, some, if you get close to like King County, they can exceed those timelines. But I would say that generally speaking, and please don't hold me to this if you're going to watch this video or, you know, respond here now, but generally speaking, if, if I had to ask the question, I would say the average building jurisdiction across the counties and states that Adair Homes serves, like Washington, Oregon, you know, Idaho, Arizona, right? The average building jurisdiction generally is able to turn a building permit in about, you know, I'll say one to two months or about four to eight weeks um, seems to be a very, you know, average timeline. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answers the question, Gabby. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, and then kind of moving on to more frequently asked questions. So I just have a whole bunch of random <laughs> questions that we usually see. Um, but first, can you maybe go over the different types of permits possibly you've kind of talked about some of them but maybe just giving a rundown of maybe what types of permits people will need to be submitting for yeah so we can we can really uh, spiral off on, mm -hmm. on this conversation and i promise everyone will end up getting confused including <laughs> myself but generally speaking right let's just think of it in these terms you have one permit and that one permit is called a building permit right end of conversation okay however um within a building permit think of it like this the the jurisdiction needs to know that you as the customer are going to be protected and that the builder is building things to current code uh, specific to that jurisdiction so we already talked about things like a septic permit Right, so a septic permit is going to be applied for usually by your septic installer and then approved by the health department. And then your building permit generally would not get approved until they get the sign off from the health department. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, within a building permit, you have multiple layers of other permits. Right. Generally, as a consumer, we, we don't have to deal with this. Right. It's all it's all it's all rolled up in the fee structure under the building permit umbrella. But you have things like plumbing permits. Right. Electrical permits, because you have plumbing inspectors, different electrical inspectors. Generally, that's done through LNI, the Department of Labor and Industries. Generally, electrical inspections are not done at the county or jurisdictional or city level. Um, so all that to say there are a multitude of. Um, you know, I'll say smaller specific permits mm -hmm. that, that all roll up under the building permit. And there's generally two departments at the jurisdiction. You have the planning side and then you have the building side. So um, what a what a land use planner, when they're approving your building permit, they're looking at things like, does the home uh, fit the building setbacks? Does it does it meet, um, you know, minimum lot size and uh, minimum or maximum, uh, you know, square footage or coverage uh, of the lot and all of these other like planning related uh, code compliance things. And then your building department and that team, they're looking at things like the engineering of the home and the structure of the home. And does it meet, you know, code compliance like, like we talked about previously. So I will say that there's, there's, there's a lot going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes all incorporated underneath what you and I would know as a building permit. So a lot of moving parts and we definitely have to give our jurisdictions grace mm -hmm. because uh, multiple, multiple individuals and departments come together generally to issue what's called a building permit. Okay. Yeah. 
And then kind of what happens maybe if uh, one of the permits isn't approved or if there's errors on the paperwork submitted, you kind of have to do that whole process again. Yeah, this is this is the fun part. This is where it gets really fun. So I will say that um, for for answering this question, Gabby, I'm going to I'm going to assume that your builder is applying for your building permits for you. OK, but here's the thing. A builder, I promise, is going to do their level best to pull together a fully design drafted, engineered set of building permit plans specific for your lot to the best of their ability. And I don't want you to, you know, look down upon your builder. Um, if for any reason, the building department has to kick back the permit, mm -hmm. right? Because remember, there's, there's, there, there's a bunch of human beings involved. And remember all those departments that I talked about that all mm -hmm. come together to approve a building permit? Um, unfortunately, it is somewhat common for, um, let's say, a building official or a plans examiner to come back and say, oh, uh, hey, Gabby, uh, what about this detail? Or, hey, um, your engineering uh, isn't quite complete in this category. Or maybe the home has been accidentally misengineered for this seismic area or this snow load requirement or fill in the blank. Um, but all that to say, Gabby, it's not the end of the world. In fact, it's just it's just a very small little hurdle. What the builder will do is they will take that list of corrections generally is a very small list. The builder will um, expedite and get those corrections made. They will resubmit to your building jurisdiction. And then hopefully in a very short period of time, um, those corrected documents will be reviewed and then your building permit will be issued. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't want anybody uh, watching the video or joining us here today to think that, oh, now my building permit just got denied and the lot's unbuildable. Right. No, 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 no. All of that feasibility on if this lot is even permitted to have a home, a single family or multifamily residential home put on it, all of that and all those questions are answered way, way, way up front when you're when, when you're just beginning your uh, your relationship with your builder. So at the time of permitting, we're just trying to actually get all the engineering and get, get all the plan sets completed and done. Mm -hmm. So okay. <laughs> it's good to know. Um, and then why would someone maybe need, need approval from the fire department to build a house? Oh yeah. That's, that's only needed. I would say every single time. <laughs> so again, uh, depending upon the size of the jurisdiction, right? M remember how we, remember how we talked about, you know, septic permits and those are done through the health department, yes. right? So, um, certain jurisdictions, um, not all the time, but generally speaking, they're usually more rural communities, right? Um, when, 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 you, when you think about fires, you know, forest fires, you know, and, and things of that nature, you know, a fire department, they're going to look at things like, okay, hold on a second here, Gabby, where's the nearest fire hydrant? And don't hold me to this. But generally speaking, if it's more than five miles away, right? Or the, the I'm sorry, not a fire hydrant, but like a local uh, mm -hmm. volunteer uh, fire department, if it's more than five miles away, that that will impact um, you know the home and, and what and what is known as fire code, right? If if there's no fire hydrant within a certain number of, of feet or hundreds mm -hmm. of feet, that that could impact it. Things like driveways. So um, you know if the home is on a well and there is no fire hydrant, and the home is on fire, well your local fire chief needs to be able to bring water trucks up to your home and be able to extinguish that fire. Well, what happens if your driveway is extraordinarily steep and it's gravel and there's no turnaround for those trucks? Mm -hmm. So these are these are all of the things that your local fire department is going to be looking at. And they're going to say, OK, Gabby, um, for your building permit to be approved, we need you to do these things, meaning your driveway is so steep that we're going to we're going to require that you pave it so that way we can get a truck up it. Um, we're going to require that you have a minimum turnaround or what's known as like a hammerhead up at the top of that hill. Now I'm exaggerating, but at the top of that hill. So if a fire truck does have to come up, they're going to be able to need to back into that hammerhead or turn around and get back down the hill. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and you'll say, okay, yep, thank you very much. And so th those will be known costs to you at the time that you are um, getting your, your permit through the planning phases. Um, and some of the things are very minor, like um, in some of the jurisdictions that we serve, it'll be, you know, uh, metal valley uh, flashing or gutter guards or things of that nature that the jurisdiction might require. But that's where your builder really needs to come into play. Mm -hmm. And as you as you interact with your uh, with the builder of choice, they're hopefully coaching you through this because they've they've applied for building permits in this jurisdiction, hopefully multiple, multiple times. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, let's see. Um, I know sometimes uh, our homeowners uh, uh, build their homes uh, with um, an HOA. So do they have to have HOA approval before um, or after they receive their building permits? It's a great question. So <clears throat> HOA approvals um, are technically not a permit. However, they act exactly like a permit. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what an HOA truly is, right, for those of us that may not know, is that is your homeowners association. So if you are building on a lot that is within a homeowners association, really what that means is your community has an opinion on how the home needs to be built, right? And, you know, there's minimum, minimum square footage sizes, uh, everything from exterior facades to, I mean, quite frankly, you name it, lots of different architectural components. But at the end of the day, think of it like code compliance, right? Mm -hmm. To build a home in this neighborhood, in this community, in this homeowners association or HOA, right? Your home must meet these requirements. And so when uh, near and around the same exact time that you're applying for the building permit, right? That's when you and your builder after your plans are done and ready, that's when they also need to be submitted to your HOA, right? And that board, um, usually it's the architectural control committee, um, and they will sign off on your permit stating that yes, this set of plans meets all requirements of our homeowners association. And then with that approval, that's when the jurisdiction will then, you know, issue final approvals for your building permit. Mm -hmm. and there may be things outside of structural like um, some of the jurisdictions are, or homeowners associations that, that we work in, um, you know, has it has very little to do with structure and has more to do with like, you know, the work hours of the employees. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Adair or builder, you cannot start work before 7 a.m. in the morning. Right. Because we don't want, you know, air guns and framing going off at six o'clock in the morning when we're trying to get kids up and ready for school. So just understand that long winded way of answering your question is that homeowners associations are are crucial to make sure that both you and your builder are well aware of the rules and guidelines, as well as the structural code compliant mm -hmm. things that must take place in that community, because the building jurisdiction and the actual permit um, department is going to care about getting that HOA approval. Great question. <laughs> Um, and I know people can be very excited when starting to build their home, but can people uh, start working on kind of lot prepping before permits are approved? That's another question that we get no less than 100 percent of the time. <laughs> um, and I'm going to tell you that it depends. So let me let, let me explain myself. Um, usually a building jurisdiction will not want you to start excavating um, and prepping for the foundation until your building permit is approved. And quite frankly, I don't know that you would want to do that before your building permit's approved mm -hmm. because what happens if engineering comes back and, you know, uh, based on code compliance or whatnot, I mean, I'm, I mean I'm, I'm exaggerating again, but we have to widen that footing or we have to you know, lengthen that wall or we have to, you know, heighten that wall or lower that footing, you know, now your excavator has to come back and redig, right? So as a rule of thumb, um, it is always, always best to get the building permit that's signed, sealed, delivered, and you have the blessing. And now you and the excavator can look at that permit and say, okay, let's dig this thing for this foundation that has been approved. Mm -hmm. Make sense? 
But when you talk about excavation, that's kind of a general comment. What about like lot clearing? What about, you know, uh, taking all the blackberries and shrubs off of the property? What about, you know, getting in a, a gravel driveway? You know, what about, what about all these other excavation services that are not like, you know, digging the crawl space and prepping for the foundation? And I would say that that's where it really depends. It depends on the jurisdiction. Some jurisdictions do not want you moving dirt. They do not want you taking one tree down unless it's approved where other jurisdictions are much more lenient and you can, and you can definitely prep the site mm -hmm. prior to the building permit. Um, and then once the permits approved, the excavator can do the final dig. So that's kind of a, uh, a real wishwashy way of answering mm -hmm. your question, but I would say uh, work with your builder. Uh, your builder will understand uh, your, your, your jurisdictional kind of, kind of strictness on that rule. And we can, you can go from there. <laughs> um, and I, I know I have one more question, so I'm yep. going to put up uh, this in case anyone else has questions that is watching now, because we'd love to answer them. But um, what happens uh, if I kind of get like an estimated foundation date, um, but maybe the permits aren't ready or you have to submit them again? Does that kind of affect my um, foundation for date? It, it would. It would. The, you know, no matter what the builder does from a scheduling perspective, um, I'll say most builders will communicate with their subcontractors like, hey, guys, Gabby's job is just about ready. I, I, I mean, we definitely want to get this thing on the schedule for next week or next month. Right. So I promise all these conversations are being had. However, um, if that building permit is not approved, and in our hot little hands, then I promise your foundation contractor will not be able to go out and they will not be able to pour the foundation, mm -hmm. right? Um, a couple of reasons. Number one is in the, in the majority of jurisdictions, the excavation is not done, right? Copy paste the conversation that we just had. So usually the, the building permit, the approved building permit, that's the trigger. That is the that is the, 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 the main, main, main trigger that, that launches you into what the industry calls, you know, vertical construction, right? Where we can, you can dig, pour a foundation and you can start going. So I will say that, yes, your builders should be communicating with excavators. Mm -hmm. Yes, they should be communicating with their uh, foundation crews to get you on the schedule. Um, and usually the team involved with, kind of what I referenced as your pre-construction team, uh, your builder, um, th they should know pretty closely when your building permit should be approved based on average uh, cycle times and jurisdictional updates. Because a lot of the jurisdictions are, are, are somewhat good at providing updates on, on how, how and when that, that building permit should be uh, approved. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'll check the comments, but I don't think... We have any more questions, so hopefully we answered everyone's questions, but I'm um, just kind of giving some key takeaways to what uh, we talked about here, just kind of some of the importance of permits, uh, many different types of permits, uh, just the whole kind of application process and what to expect um, with your builder and how they can help you through that process and then just some of the overall timeline of what you um, can expect. Um, so let's see. So I think, oh. Um, so our next upcoming session will be about financing your custom home, which should have a lot of great information in it. Um, and that'll be Wednesday, November 22nd at 1 p.m. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think we uh, have answered kind of all the questions for today. So if you're interested in learning more about um, our process, you can schedule some time to talk with our team at www.adarehomes.com. Schedule. I will also turn the page to the last one so you can see uh, all the information of how to um, contact us. Um, and then, yeah, so thank you again, Jay, for 
being here with us. <laughs> Glad to help and thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. You're always very informational. It's great. <laughs> And then uh, thank you to all of our viewers, even if you just watched for uh, a couple minutes. Um, so we will see you um, on November 22nd for our uh, next Adair Live. Take care, everybody.